Okay, now let's put in use what we know about time series regression and actually construct a simple time series model. And for this, we will build a model that explains the German retail price index, so basically inflation, by the monetary aggregate M2. And for this, I'll be using real monthly data. So I'm going to declare my data frame in inflation data. Simon operator read.csv. And if you don't know what I'm doing, just watch my video on how to read in data the path file and there you go so let's take a quick look at it and by the way i never realized that you might not use our studio um so i'm going to show you an alternative that works on all our distributions so if you want to take a look at the first rows of your uh, data you could simply put in hat on the parentheses and then just put in the name of your data frame so inflation data and this will give you the first six rows of your data frame. And you can see that we have three variables, one time variable, yyymn, the retail price uh, variable, and the M2 variable. And you can see that our uh, data starts in January 1971. And you can also look at the end of your data frame by putting in tail, open the parentheses, and then put in the name of your data frame. So inflation data. And this will give you... Um, or oh, this will show you the end of your data frame. You can see that our data is ranging uh, until 19, uh, December 1978. So this is, a, this is a great way to peek at your data. Um, <clears throat> so before we actually construct our model, let's declare the time series indicator, okay? And in um, my data frame, there is a variable called yyyymm, and it's dictating uh, the year and the month of every observation. Um, so last time I've created a new variable outside our data frame, but this time I want to show you that you could also override the variables in your data frame. So let's begin with our time variable. And since we want to change the variable inside our data frame, we have to work within, within our data frame. So we put in inflation data. So this is our data frame, dollar sign. I'm going to use the yyymm variable, assignment operator. So in this way, we're actually overriding the variable in our data frame. Our data frame is called inflation data, and we want to work with the variable yyymm in that data frame. So we separate both by putting a dollar sign between them. Now we put in the function as your, oh, by the way, what I should not forget is load the necessary packages. So this is time series data. So what we want to do is we want to use our beloved packages zoo. And if you want to load multiple packages in one line, you can separate your commands with a, a semicolon. So library, tsupsiris, there you go. Now let's, again, let's declare our time variable. So you put in inflation data dollar sign we are mm. We override it, and what we do now is we put in the function s yearmon. Open the parentheses. Then we put in well, basically the same again. Inflation data dollar sign. So dollar sign. Y, 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 M, M, comma. Then we got to put in the format of our um, time variable. Now, if you don't know what I'm doing right now, don't worry, you can just watch my video on how to declare time series data and I, there I will explain it in all detail. But but have a look at this. What are we doing? Well, we're overriding the Y, 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 M, M variable inside our data frame by taking that exact same variable and applying a function to it. So first we're going to do that and then we take the, what we get from that and override the yyymm variable inside our data frame. So hit enter and that declared the time series variable. So now we've created our time variable inside our data frame. So again, if you don't understand what I just did, just watch my video on how to declare a time series data. So next we're going to override our inflation and our M2 variables in our data frame with their zoo variables. So we're going to make some zoo variables here. So first of all, let me inflation 
data dollar sign let's work with the retail price variable assignment operator then we use the zoo function we apply that to the same variable oops sorry the same variable so retail price and we're going to use the our newly our our time variable so inflation data why why oops why 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 m m there you go so i'm going to override that one we're going to do the same thing for our m2 variable so if you want to get your last command back you just can you can just push the up arrow on your keyboard that, that will bring back the last command and this is pretty neat when you just want to make some some uh, just some changes okay so um we just overrode our variables and we created time variables for, uh, in their place so fantastic now let's plot our data so we put in plot and let's plot our data or both of our variables at the same time so we put in c bind and we're going to use um, the variable that is inside of our inflation data data frame and we're going to use retail price and we're going to use the same data frame but this time we're going to use m2 as well so hit enter and it plots our data so fantastic okay Okay, it seems fine. Well, there's an obvious trend in both variables, but um, let's check whether our variables are trend stationary. So it could be that they are trend stationary. So let's put in ADF dot test, open the parentheses, and put in data frame, uh, sorry, not data frame, inflation data. So the name of your data frame, dollar sign, retail price. So that is obviously not trend stationary. Let's try whether M2 is trend stationary. Nope, not trend stationary as well. So they're definitely not trend stationary. Okay, since our data is effectively not stationary, let's take the first difference of them and let's rerun the ADF test, okay? And we can do that in a one-liner for either variable. So we just go ahead and use the diff function and wrap it around our variable. So there you go. So that is stationary, great. Let's use our M2 variable. So that is stationary as well. Okay, it looks like both time series variables are in fact integrated of um, order one. Um, so for doing time series regression, I advise that you install and use the package DeanLM. So I'm gonna load it right here, library, library. Open the parentheses, and again, it's called Dean, like dynamic, LM. So this will uh, read in or load the, the the package. And if you if if you have not if you haven't installed it yet, just make sure that you install that package, because it has some pretty neat functions that we're going to use. And the package is basically just a wrapper for the LM function, so that it um, basically works just like well the LM function. Okay, first we declare a model and let's call it uh, fit. Okay, so and put in the assignment operator there. Next, we use the Dean LM function. So, Dean LM, open the parentheses. Now, I'm going to put some code in there and uh, just bear with me. I'm going to explain uh, what I'm doing. Okay, so let me just put some code in there. Yeah, crap. Okay, there you go. Tail data okay just let me make sure that I uh, put everything in there correct correctly okay so that looks okay that looks good that looks good 
That looks good. Okay, now, hold on. What did I just do? Well, first I've used the DeanLM function. Okay, so I'll use the DeanLM function. And that's the way to construct a time series regression model. And next I'll find my dependent variable. So next I'll find my dependent variable right over here. Okay. Um, and that's the difference of the retail price index. So I use the diff function to calculate the difference of the retail price index variable. Okay, so that's very important. Then I put in the curly operator. So I put in the, oops, sorry. Then I put in the curly operator over there to indicate that some explanatory variables will follow. Next, I've used the season, oops, sorry. Next, I've used the season, Next, I use the season function and put in the deep, put in the dependent variable. So use the season function and put in the name of my dependent variable. Now, why did I just do that? Well, have a look at the M2 plot over there. It seems that there is some sort of seasonal fluctuation in our data that we have to account for. So you can see that there are these little peaks over there. Okay, so what is it? It's like, I don't know, like summer or, or December, or whatever. So there's definitely some seasonal fluctuation in there uh, that we have to account for. Now, one thing to keep in mind, if you have, you, you always have to make sure that your seasonal fluctuation is constant over time. If it increases over time, like, well, this fluctuation does, um, well, the the, the, the um, seasonal effect cannot be captured very effectively. And I will explain why later on, but you always gotta make sure that your uh, seasonal fluctuations are constant. Now, mine are not constant, um, but well, just for demonstration purposes, uh, let's just assume they are constant, okay? Now, what the seasonal function will do is, it'll create seasonal dummy variables for the uh, periodicity of whatever variable you put in there. So whatever variable you put in there, uh, the season function will appear, take the periodicity and it will create dummy variables. So in this case, we have monthly data and it'll create 11 dummy variables for every month from February to December. And since all variables in our data frame are measured on a monthly basis, well, you can put in all the variables you want. Well, they wouldn't differ because in, in either case, the season function would create 11 um, dummy variables for February till uh, December. So that doesn't matter. Um, okay, next I've used the LM function over uh, the, sorry, the L function. I use the L function. And what it does is it'll create lagged variables for whatever variable you put in there. And remember that we are dealing with differences so that you have to use the diff function inside your L function. So it creates lags of the difference of M2. So this is what it'll, it'll does. We then put a comma after our variable and declare how many lags we want to have. And if you put in a single number, well, it'll just create that single lag. So for example, if you just put, put in a, a, a two right here, if you would just put in a two right there, what, it, what R would do is give you just, well, just the second lag. Well, but we want more. So we put in zero, um, to two points and then a 12. And this will give us uh, the, well, zero, the zero, zero lagged, so to speak. So it will just give us the um, contemporaneous effect, just a normal variable and 12 lags thereof. So um, by including zero, it also includes the contemporaneous effect. And by putting these two uh, dots over there and then some value, it will, include up to 12 lakhs. Okay, now the next thing we do is put in a comma and we say data equals inflation data. So R knows where to take the variables from because notice that I did not put the name of the data frame and a dollar sign in front of the variables. So we have to tell R where the data frame is, right? And we do that by um, that little command over there. That will indicate or that will show R where to look for the variables. Okay, so um, that is absolutely necessary. I, if, if you would not include that without um, declaring the data frame in front of every variable, it would give you an error. 
So we hit enter and that should create our model. Now let's have a look at it. So let's put in summary, open the parentheses, fit. Okay, well, it seems okay. Well, notice that our monthly dummy variables, so these are our monthly dummy variables. So you can see February, March, April, May, and so on, right? Um, notice that one of our dummy variables is in fact significant. So August is in fact significant. And it is again, it's very important that the seasonal fluctuation is constant because um, these dummy variables, well, basically what they will do is they will take the average of the monthly value. And if your, well, if, if the seasonal fluctuation increases over time, well, the average is not really a good value to compare, right? Or to use. So always make sure that the ver the seasonal fluctuation stays the same over time. So um, it is important that we include these seasonal dummy variables in a model because now we can interpret our coefficients while holding all seasonal effects constant. So this is a great thing, right? And um, notice that we have significant effects in our model. So we have significant effects at leg zero. So we have a significant contemporaneous effect. We have a significant effect at leg one. So T minus one is significant. And we have a significant effect at leg six and leg uh, nine. Now, um, this, the, however, if you take a look at the, um, if you take a look at the point estimates, well, they, they look a little bit weird, right? Because, well, well, we would be ready to accept that increasing M2 would increase inflation. Well, like six months, six months after and nine months after, this is something we, we would be ready to accept. But notice that the effect is actually negative. The contemporaneous effect is negative and at like one, the effect is negative. So this would would even decrease inflation. So increasing M2 would decrease inflation. Now, if you ask me, that sounds pretty, pretty weird. Um, now, you could explain this because notice that I'm only using, in fact, one explanatory variable. I'm only using um, the monetary aggregate M2. And it seems like we have omitted variable uh, bias in our model. But again, this is just for demonstration purposes. So, um, yeah, what you could do is just go ahead and play with your lags. So maybe you want to add some lags, maybe you want to exclude some lags, uh, whatever. And maybe you want to include new variables. So this, this is definitely something I would encourage you to do if you take a look at, well, these weird findings. So maybe include new, uh, some, some other variables and, of course, their lags as well. And uh, then take a look whether your uh, findings are different. Now, one last point. You could, of course, also use the new vest standard errors if you have some suspicion of your data being serial correlated. And well, time series data, especially if it's of monthly nature, most of the time it is serial correlated. So you could just go ahead and uh, use the new vest standard errors for this. So for that, we're going to use some packages and you should be familiar with that. If not, watch my video on robust standard errors. So library, what do we need? We need LM test. We need sandwich. Well, not library, it's library. So we need sandwich. Okay, great. So we need these two packages. Now you could use new West standard errors just by putting in, you know, cof test. You should be familiar with that. And the name of your model, comma VCOV equals new e west hit enter and that should give you the new e west standard errors um, but since our model is likely to misspecified well it would only make things worse so i would rather opt for including new variables <laughs>